So a few Sundays ago we talked about disgust and I told you about the man who had dedicated his life to studying disgust by Dr. Paul Rosen at Penn State University. And then we had two Sundays about sadness and tears and I told you about uh, Michael Trimble at the University of London who talked about why we cry and that crying is a way of saying to people, I'm hurt, I need your help, come and be with me. But now, finally, we get to talk about joy, and there's all kinds of people from within the church and outside of the church who talk about the science of joy and where joy comes from. I might refer a little bit today to a guy out of Harvard Divinity School, his name was Michael Acor, who has given his life over to studying the question, where does joy come from? And I love to talk about this because I want all of you to have joy. And when I say joy, I mean that deep, abiding, permanent joy that comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ and is not threatened by death or darkness or anything else in the world, the joy that is deep at the foundation of your being, and you are all able to have it. Some interesting things about both joy and misery is that they tend to be spirals, in that once you get into the habit of moving upwards towards joy, it continues onwards and onwards, and once you get into the habit of moving towards misery and sadness, that's a spiral that goes downward and downward. And if you have gotten into that downward spiral of sadness and misery and fear and bitterness, life is no fun for you. And it sure isn't any fun for the people around you either. So, get into the upward joy spiral. All the commentators on joy say close to the same thing. There's a few keys. Uh, the first key to having joy is this. Be thankful. Every day, be intentional. Take time to sit down and clear your mind and say to yourself, what do I have to be thankful for today? What do I have to be thankful for in my life? It can be tough at times, particularly if you're going through a difficult experience, through sickness or even bereavement. How do we be thankful? But even then, it is possible for us to dig deep in the soul and say, today, in spite of any pain, or any sickness, I am going to find those things for which I can give thanks. And once we begin to do that intentionally and systematically, we actually rewire our brain so that it stops obsessing over darkness and sadness and sickness and starts to build a life around joy and being thankful sometimes is not our natural response in life. Uh, being joyful sometimes is not our natural state. And that's because we have this weird idea that in order to have joy, we have to get stuff. The idea that joy is the response to something else that happens. So that if we get a little bit of extra something, we feel joy. If we uh, succeed a little bit, we feel joy. But true joy is not attached to obtaining anything or accomplishing anything. True joy is the response that comes before any of those things happen. It's the decision whereby you're going to say, I am thankful. I am joyful. The difficulty with allowing joy to be 
the response to good things that happen or the accumulation of money or possessions is this. It's like being in, oh, let me think of an illustration. It's like being in a high jumping contest. And every time you clear the next level, you feel joy because you have accomplished something. The difficulty with the contest is that every time you clear one level, the darn judges move the bar up to the next level. And then you dedicate your whole life to jumping over the next level, and you feel joy for a few moments until the bar is raised to the next level. And then you dedicate your life to clearing that, and you do when you your joy for a moment. But in this high jumping contest of the accumulation of wealth or possessions or success, the bar just keeps going up. And the joy that you feel at each accomplishment is only shallow and temporary. It's a really difficult and painful thing to say to people, stop trying to jump over that bar. Decide today that you will be joyful. This isn't just a scientific or a psychiatric theory. It happens to hold up pretty good in the scientific world. We can observe how human brains are changed for the better when people decide to have joy. But it's not just that. It is of God. It is a part of the gospel. It is a command of God to be joyful. At 1 Thessalonians 5.16, Jesus, or the writer says, be joyful always. Pray at all times. Be thankful in all circumstances. This is what God wants from you in your life in union with Jesus Christ. Do not restrain the Holy Spirit. When we are thankful, the Holy Spirit comes in and changes everything. You have seen this. You know how it works. Because you have all known people who had everything and had their health and strength and wealth Some of them are these. When we talk to the people around us, 
they say mean or hurtful things or critical things about other people, there's a really strange psychological phenomenon that it happens. The people to whom we are talking do not attribute those faults and problems to the people we're talking about. They attribute them to the person who speaks. So whatever nasty thing you say about another person, people believe about you. Nobody knows why it works like that. But there have been so many instances where someone thought they could hurt another person by being hypercritical when in fact only they were hurt. It's also true that when we see faults in other people, what we always see are those faults that exist most powerfully in ourselves. So the next time you're looking at someone and thinking, I don't like this about them, I don't like that about them, I wish they wouldn't, what you are really doing is revealing yourself and your own deepest faults and your own deepest problems. That's why God says to have joy, show kindness, speak with kindness to everyone. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians 4.32 says, The day will come when God will set you free. Get rid of all bitterness and anger. No more shouting or insults. No more hateful feelings of any sort. Instead, be kind and tender-hearted to one another and forgive one another as God has forgiven you in Jesus Christ. Joy comes out of kindness towards Joy for yourself comes from giving joy to other human beings. All the other secrets of joy, you've probably known them already, but sometimes someone needs to remind you, do not dedicate your life to success and to your career and to the accumulation of things. Dedicate your life to caring for family and friends and those people in need around you. We always think that if we get that promotion or a little bit more money or a better house, it will bring joy. But that quest only brings endless bitterness, stress, fear, insecurity, and misery. Joy comes from relationship, compassion, Time with loved ones, caring for those in need. Those things bring wholeness, healing, peace, contentedness, and the deep abiding joy that comes only from God. The scripture lesson today was that little story of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus had fallen into that downward spiral of misery and bitterness and loneliness and fear and sadness. And he tried to remedy that with the accumulation of wealth and the spiral went deeper and deeper down until he was alienated from all the people he should have loved. But one day he heard a story about a man who was coming to his town, a man who talked about compassion forgiveness and kindness and grace and mercy and somewhere in the very deepest part of the soul of Zacchaeus a voice said this is what I need this is where my joy is he ran out into the street looking for Jesus and you know the story he climbed the sycamore tree Jesus saw him and said Zacchaeus come down Today I must come and dine with you in your house. And all the people condemned Jesus for going to the home of a miserable, sinful man. But 
Jesus went in and everything changed for Zacchaeus. He promised to give away all those things upon once he had tried to build his joy. And Jesus said to him, Zacchaeus, on this day, salvation has come to this house. And a man who was once bitter became a man filled with joy. Joy comes from thanksgiving, from prayer focused on that thanksgiving, from kindness, from relationship, from generosity. Jesus has much more to say about joy and peace, and we'll take a look at those things next week when we consider the Beatitudes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 